Welcome back to Real Estate with Mariah and Spence. So Spence doesn't know what we're talking. Spence Spencer, he doesn't know what we're talking about today, but he'll find out and like he'll I ever do. Catch right on. So today we're talking about. Um, we're answering the question. I want to own a home, but I'm on a tight budget. What can I do? So this is something that um, we're seeing a lot of right now because as we know, home prices have skyrocketed, interest rates have gone up, and a lot of people are just on a tighter budget. And this is something that I'm passionate about helping other young people be able to still purchase even though they're on a tight budget. And I would say you probably are too because of our situation where when we purchased our first house, we were on a very tight budget. So we purchased a home. It was a, a starter home and it was on, you know, a side of town. We didn't want to live on forever, but it was the ch more affordable side of town. So we purchased mm -hmm. that home there, mm -hmm. which led us to our second home. And we couldn't have bought the second home without the first home. And the second home was a little more desirable to us. And then the second home is what led us to purchase the third home, which you know, it's no dream home, but it certainly has a lot more characteristics and things we love about it than the first two. And we couldn't have purchased it without the first two. And then we're able to just purchase a rental property the other week. And so the, all of this is because we bought that first starter home and it led us to other being able to live in and purchase other homes that we um, liked and enjoyed more on the other sides of town that we wanted to live on. And so that's what the show is all about. How do you get, just get started, just get your foot in the door because I don't want to see any more, you know, young people who are wanting to buy, getting priced out of the market or just deciding not to buy all over mm -hmm. um, or all together because they can't buy the exact home that they want to live in for the next 10, 15 years. And I'm just thinking how much they're missing out on because they didn't just take that step. Maybe it's a 500 square foot little home, you know, maybe you got to commute. So we'll, I won't, this intro is getting a little too long, but you can see I'm a little bit passionate about this because of, like I said, our, um, experience in, in, in real estate. So, well, the fact that we're so young yeah. uh -huh. and we've had, I mean, we're no home experts when it comes <laughs> to buying, but we've had three properties in the last what six years. Four. We four. just bought one. That's unbelievable. Yeah. So three properties in the last four years. Um, that that's pretty phenomenal, though. For for yeah. a young newlywed couple that got married when they're nineteen, and now we live where we do now. Um, in a, in a weird way, it is it is price or home jumping. You know, you're you're adding up. So in a weird, not not a weird way. I Every need to time not say you that. buy, you're able to. <laughs> it's like going to a pawn shop or something. Bit. You're yeah. you're trading up for something else that you want. Yeah. And that's been pretty fun to us is to see how especially in a real estate market like we've been in over the last, what, since 11, 2011, 2012, mm -hmm. we started coming up mm -hmm. and out of it. I mean, it, it's it been like, just take advantage of your situation in the atmospheres that you're surrounded in. And this real estate market's been one of those things where we have been able to surround ourselves with, A, the right people to ask the right questions with, but yeah. B, to get and break that mindset, that fearful mindset of, oh man, what if I put more than 5% down? Am I going to have enough cash reserves? There's something to that that just holds people back. Or they might think they have to save um, for 20% down. You know, And the case is, whatever right. works for your situation, your living situation, is pendant in a, a big variable on each family. Right. Um, so we have um, a few points here that we're just going to touch on and go down the list. These are all tips for you. If you're, like I said, if you are someone who's in that position where you're saying, man, I want to be a homeowner, but I'm on a really tight budget. What are some things I can do to help make that happen? Then hopefully these tips help you out and you are able to apply them to your home buying process. Mm -hmm. So tip number one is expand your search to towns farther from whatever city your city you're near consider commuting a little bit longer even if it's like i said even if it's just temporarily like we did when it, we lived in our first home it was not a side of town that we were wanting to live on however it was what we could afford and i'm so thankful that we brought that home on that side of town because like i said it helped us buy the other one so maybe you know you are hesitant to buy because you can only afford a home that's on the outskirts of town in a more rural area, say like a 30 minute drive even or 40 minute drive from um, the city that you're nearest and you don't want to live out there. But what if you could just make that sacrifice for 
you know, however long, um, until you're able to buy that next home and that first home will help get you there. So consider the sacrifice of just commuting a little bit longer than you might want to. I think that is valuable. And yes. living in Salem, we, we have like multiple areas, right? We have North, Northeast, Kaiser, South yeah. Salem, Southeast and West Salem. So the thing is like we specifically, we started in Northeast Salem. It yeah. wasn't a bad location. Wasn't a bad side of town. Really, no. Salem's so safe. It's, Salem is It's great. kind of funny. It, 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 I always get questions um, for <laughs> out-of-state clients like, hey, what's the right area? What's the bad area? And I really, there, there's, of course, always going to be some areas, that you, you know, you just, you don't really need to be in. There's really no place for you. But our crime rate, it's it's petty theft for totally. the, a lot of part. For, for being a capital of the state, we, totally. we have really good ratings uh, yeah. being here in Salem. But what's cool is on each side of, of town, you, you're 10, 15 minutes away from each each thing and but what we realized is we just didn't know anybody or have anything going on on that side of Salem so we did sacrifice price wise and we we took a beating um it wasn't even a real beating it was just we had to spend more time um in transportation to get to the other sides of town we more we we enjoyed more but it helps if you have the mindset of this is what I'm going to be doing for now. You, like when you purchase a home, look for your right now home, not your forever home because your home right now is going to get you there. So you don't have to be thinking like, oh, I'm going to have to be driving this distance forever. Like if you want ideally to live somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Another thing is there are quite a few towns that are on the outskirts of Salem. Now, a lot of them used to be cheaper and now the prices have gone up so much that they're like, it's like they're oh like my gosh, they're more. more. Yeah, it's like, it's insane. Yeah. It's insane. But there are towns that still are um, cheaper, maybe because they are a little more out there. They're a little more secluded. But like I said, if that's what it takes to get you into that first home, if your budget's like really, really tight, then one of those towns might be a good option for you. Um, like just thinking a little bit further out there. Yeah, just you know? think outside the box. Yeah, think you know? outside the box. Okay, so number two is be open to a townhome, a condo, or even a zero lot line home. This is a big one I think a lot of people will just say no to without ever stepping foot into one. Okay, so here's here's the deal. A lot of people who would like to be homeowners, but they can't afford a home that's not, say... Okay, our market has... We have luxury condos that are like a million dollars downtown Salem. We have luxury townhomes that are going to cost a lot more. We have some like upscale townhomes, condos, even zero lot line homes. However, you can find an older condo or townhome or zero lot line home that's going to be way more affordable than that same square footage, but a home. And so a lot of people just count these out because they think... I don't want that. I want my own property. I want privacy. But it's like, if your only other option is renting because you can't buy, then what is the big deal with just having a shared wall for a short period of time while you're building so much equity and like sheltering all this income? I don't understand what the big, like, I don't understand why people are so against it if it's their only option. It's just a mindset. I feel like, and a lot of people, they've never even like stepped foot in a townhome or a zero lot line. Yes. Um, they always say, you know, there's no yard, all that. But if you're living in Salem already and you're renting like in an apartment or whatever, it, it really doesn't get any more worse right. than that. Right. If you're looking for home ownership. And, right. and what's cool is obviously you're building equi- equity mm-hmm. um, into yourself. So like, for instance, we bought our town home. We really plan to live there. Uh, for for quite some time, we we had no intentions of moving. Quite and, some time to us is like five years. <laughs> well, you just never know with know. life and, Wait, and yeah. what happens. Because yeah. the location was great, it was right. our lifestyle. But when Didn't we moved do in, yard care. we loved it. When we moved in, we were Absolutely like, "This is so it. nice!" Like it was just yeah, new, or everything was good. But yes. what I can tell you is, living in a town home or more of a zero lot line type space. Uh-huh. In the beginning, it's amazing. You you just you know it's fun. It's easy. But then over time, I think you just like, it's one of those things with, with us in, in the world we live in today, it's, uh-huh. it's you, you always want more, right? right? And so you just want to sell eventually. <laughs> then I, that's kind of what happened to us. It wasn't anything, say, anything even wrong with the home. I would say for us, the reason why the t- that townhome situation got more difficult is because when we moved into it, we purchased it, we were a young married couple. We had no kids. We, we both worked a lot. We were in real estate obviously. Mm -hmm. And so we weren't home a lot. And 
it didn't really matter. We didn't really want a yard because it was more like a hassle to take care of. We didn't have any kids. And then we had a baby there. It was still great while we had a baby. But then as soon as she got old enough to like start walking, we we're kind of like, okay, it'd be nice to not have all these up and down stairs. It'd be nice to not have to have a yard, that kind of thing. So our life changed. However, with all of that being said, if we were in that position, um, right now, having a two and a half year old where we're at in our lives, being a little bit older, whatever. If we were right in that position right now, I would still go back and buy it again if that's oh, yeah. what I needed to do to have the square footage I wanted and be able to afford it or to just get into a home. I would never be like, just because I have a two and a half year old, it's a little inconvenient not to have a yard. I would still buy it and gain equity. Absolutely. And not choose to rent. So although, because it's nice now because we don't have to, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But if I was in that position, I would totally do it again. Yeah. So, and I mean, just being yes. there for over, just over two and a half years, were we there for three? I don't even know. I think, I think it was felt, still two and a half years. It felt like a long time. We, Cause I mean, for instance, we refinanced like yes, we four or five months before we sold the property. And if you're refinancing yeah. generally, I mean, you're paying closing costs again. So you're not, you're not going to want to refinance or refinance and then sell. So we, we really didn't uh, see it coming. We just made a decision. We took advantage of a market because we saw the equity that we had. I thought yeah. there was no way we were going to be able to get away with selling this townhouse, which by There's the way, so our, the that. townhouse we had, it was, it, it had the more square footage and, um, full master bedrooms than like every other model in the area we lived in. So we knew we had value there, but we didn't touch it. We didn't do any remodeling. We didn't Nothing. do a single repair while living yeah. there. It, we just lived, and that was one of the funner times um, in home ownership is yeah. just being able to live, walk in and out your door, be yeah. um, turnkey, and also make some Airbnb money too, which yeah. I thought was pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of benefits, and um, if if that's what it's going to take to get you into home, a home being open to a condo, townhome, zero lot line home, then I think it's definitely worth looking into. Mm -hmm. Okay. So our next tip is know realistically upfront what you can afford, know all costs and what your numbers are. This will make everything go so much smoother for you. Um, sorting all of this out upfront and having zero questions about this. But Mariah, how do I find out what I'm qualified for? <laughs> so the first step in the home buying process if you're new to the home buying process, the very first step is you call me or you, e you email me. Ideally, most of my clients email me first. And then from there, we are going to set up what I call a home buyer consultation. This is a phone call or no, no, meeting no, in the no, office. No. no, no, no. I will get there. Listen, okay. a phone call, meeting in the office or FaceTime appointment. And we will go over whatever we need to. Basically, this meeting is to help us know what we need to know to do the best job for you, to serve you in the best way and for you to get your questions answered and just hopefully be more prepared going into the process. Step number one. Step number two, I will recommend a solid lender that you can trust ah, to you. That's oh, how we you find it. You do not it. have to go with our lender. You can choose whatever you want lender you want to, but it is in your best interest to use a awesome lender. So we will recommend one you can trust or you can use your own. But that's step number two is call in the lender. And that is where, so when we do the consultation, I can't really do much as far as like looking up houses for you because you don't know exactly what you're qualified for. So that's the first step. Step number two, you talk to the lender and your lender is going to be able to tell you what your monthly payment would be at each price, what, how much you'd need down at each price, what the different loan programs are for and what you would qualify for and all of that good stuff. And so once you talk to your lender, you will have a clear, you should have a clear idea of um, how much you're wanting, how much is best for you to spend, what loan is best for you, what you'll need down in all of that. And so, um, yeah, I just told you it, but yeah. Okay. So, so that does make sense. Yes. So first get a initial home buying yes. consultation from a local I just local wanted to realtor. get, put that out there. Cause a lot of people think the first step is like looking at homes on Zillow, or they think the first step is going to an open house or calling their lender. Right. First step is your realtor. Cause your realtor should be able to point you to a great lender. Cause yeah. most people don't just have a great lender in their pocket. And if you do, then that's awesome. But most people don't. And so that's step number. We literally one. have a bullet okay. point checklist yes. of what you need to do to make the yes. process as easy as possible yeah. because we help so many clients every year do that, whether they fully fulfill and, and end up purchasing by the end of the year or not, we are constantly doing this. This is what we do as our job and this is what we love and this is why we are professionals. Yes. Okay, so the next step is understand needs versus wants. What can you work with? 
get a little creative. I think that's good. Like though. I said, yeah. needs I mean, versus wants. So yes. big though in the home buying process. It's, it's huge. unbelievable yes. what people come in with their budget and say, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. I'm like, well, firstly, what 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 do we need? Because do you need two bed, three bed, five mm-hmm. bed? Well, this is what's in your price category. And then let's not even look at price. Let's make sure we're in, you know, the 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 category that you're pre-approved within, obviously. Mm-hmm. But don't look at like, hey, what am I willing to offer at this point? Look at the home itself and say, do I see myself living here? Does this fulfill all of my needs for family functionality, for hosting events, things like that, for people to come to my home if that's your personality and you want people over all the time? And Does it, it fulfill mean, your needs? And listen, that doesn't mean that you have to have a large home. I walked into homes that were like, I remember I showed a house a, a long time ago and it was legitimately like a 500, 600 square foot house. It was a, you know, regular mm-hmm. stick built home, but it mm-hmm. was very, very small. And it was so functional and so cute. And I just wanted to stay there just because of the way that the one, the way that they took, they took great care of it. They decorated it so nicely and they just made it such a good, um, what's the right word? They did a really great job with the use of space. Mm -hmm. So you do not need this huge space. If I, if that's all your budget can afford or a smaller thousand square foot, whatever it is, you can totally make that um, conducive for still having people over and hosting. It's just about what you do with the space and how, you know, absolutely cluttered you are and all absolutely. that. So yes. Okay. Get a little creative. So that was our last step. Ne- mm-hmm. Last tip. Next one. Can you make some additional income with your property? Once you own it, if your monthly payment is a little tight for you, can you rent out a bedroom to a friend or, or on Airbnb to make some extra cash to make your, um, to help a little bit with that tight budget? Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know. I check the laws around. You don't take my word for it. Do some digging. But do you got an RV? Is there something you can rent out in your driveway? Is there a shed already on the property that you can remodel into an extra living space? I, I don't know. You know, try that out because eventually the whole point of living right is to live for free and not work for somebody, right? And yeah, because once once you have financial freedom, you're really a lot more happier for one. I've been really into a um a, a TV series on Netflix called Alone. If you guys have ever watched it, but like all these people, a lot of them, they used to you know have full time employed jobs, and they just got sick of it, you know, and they wanted to be more self efficient. And mm-hmm. in order to do that, they have to get rid of the fear of creating and making money in order to live. So that's the mm-hmm. whole point of self efficiency. How can you make your home more self efficient? So you can maybe have somebody else paying the bills or you guys splitting the bills in some way and you you don't even have to think about money and you're actually enjoying your day-to-day life again. Right. I love that. That's really cool. Okay. So the next tip is if you're on a tight budget, I would highly recommend sticking with properties that need cosmetic updates and no more than that. You don't want to be dealing with some super expensive things around the corner. If it's a stretch for you to buy the home in the first place, because that would put you in a bad position. Thankfully, that is what our home inspections for. Um, also if I'm doing, um, because a lot of our clients are virtual, virtual clients. Mm -hmm. They're, they're out of state clients. So they're people moving here from other areas. Um, and they are not able to do their home shopping in person. So if I'm doing a virtual tour for a client, for example, um, I'm no licensed inspector, of course, but if I do happen to notice something, um, a lot of things that would come up you know, in an inspection, you can't really just see by looking at it. Um, it's more behind the scenes, but if I do smell, like say I smell something musty, I will tell you for sure. But that is what the home inspections for. Um, so just know that, um, but I do think it is a good idea to not get yourself in a situation where you're purchasing a home. If it is like super a stretch for you and it's like the max of your budget and it's, um, that, that has more than cosmetic because, Things can add up real quick if you're if your home is needing a new roof next year and water heater at the same time and you're already maxing out your budget that could just be a lot for you. And you know, huh. you know, as a as a home buyer, you kind of have a sense of your finances and budget, yeah. especially if you're shopping for homes at this point and you've been in and out five six homes and you're looking for the right one. Yeah, you're gonna take a good look around and you're gonna have this like thought, be like, oh my gosh, it's a lot of work, or I'm like, oh, yeah, I can just put paint on that. No big deal. And you still love the, the space. You don't have to actually do any type of demo. But what I'm trying to say is have some type of 
gut feeling when you're purchasing a property because you'll know right from wrong and your future plans, the type of personality you are. Some people can't buy a house and not do anything to it. Some people can literally just move right in and start their life exactly how the sellers were living. So it's really a personality trait as well and during a home purchase. Um, but go with your gut when it comes to remodel projects, things that need to be done. So you don't really al always think about your finances and money after the purchase. Okay, so um, now we have a quick viewer question before we end our show. By the way, if you are watching this and you have any real estate questions, we'd love to answer them in a future episode. Feel free to um, comment below. And I do have a questions. listing of the week after this oh, viewer question. Fabulous. Yeah. Okay, comment below, email us, go through our website. We'd love to answer any of your questions about real estate. Okay, so our question today is How do you know when it's time to buy your first home? This is such a big decision. Hmm. How, how how do you know when to start buying a home? Do you want to know when it's time to buy your first home? You want to know what I think? Right meow. When <laughs> you're it? qualified. There as you soon go. as you're qualified to buy your first home. If you're qualified for $250,000 and all that can buy you is a very, very, very small 1970s built condo that hasn't been updated or touched, buy that. If all it can afford you is a manufactured home by that. I really believe that you, because what's your alternative? Unless you have a better alternative and you're able to save money. But if you don't, like most people listening probably don't, then you're renting and rent is only going to go up. Inflation. I mean, everything rent is not going to get cheaper, you guys. And you know what I'd say you should do? What? If you're, you know, dating somebody, you're single even, let's like group up with a party and let's go double up on a home and split it 50-50. Like and we both get pre-qualified. We both own it 50-50. Because like I think today's show is more marketed towards first-time home buyer. And yeah, so if you're a first-time home buyer out there, we're trying to create possibilities and ideas and options for you to make a way into a property. And whether you're splitting the profits at 20 grand a piece or 100 grand a piece um, after you purchase and sell, you're making a profit. You're not just walking away from your rental that you've been signed into for the last year through a lease and starting over and not being able to save. Right. It, you know, that that's one of my, to, to answer that question though, that's make it happen. Um, and that's one of the things that I would say, make, be creative and I've, don't live in fear. I've seen people do this um, before, like say like two brothers, for example, yeah. young people Family couldn't members. usually afford a home each on their own go in together, split the down payment. They're going to split the cost of the mortgage. And then when you do sell it, you know, say something happened, you know, people are always like, well, what if something happens and you don't get along? Well, you, you know, you're both your names are on the title. You're yeah. just going to sell it and split the money. What, what's the big you deal? You guys are in a legal I, contract. I don't know. There. I mean, you're going to split it and sell it and split the money regardless. So that's be what smart. I would say. Obviously be wise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About who you buy a house with, but, um, definitely as a good option is with, if you have a sibling or a friend that wants to buy a house, Go in together. Because, I mean, this market, you're, everybody just feels so outpriced. Mm -hmm. You know, every the, the average sales price right now here in Salem is like 460s, 440s. And interest, I mean, hasn't really gone down lately. It's only been going up. I think we've, we're in the 6% now. And uh, that that's that's been kind of devastating to a lot of my first-time home buyers, um, that clientele. Um, and that's why, I mean, we got to be creative in some way and make some type of sacrifice. If, if your position's open to it, that's just going to ultimately make you more wealthy in five, 10, 20 years to come. So yeah, it's, it's cool what you can do with real estate, I think. But, um, yeah. what, another really what cool thing of real estate, yes, tell us about speaking it. Speaking about it tell is, about um, it. we got a listing of the week mm. and you know, I like using this channel to promote my current clients, my future clients you guys listening and I want you to understand that if if you know somebody out there that wants to buy sell any type of real estate or just has a question our, our phone numbers are always open our email address is always open yeah. okay so comment below and we are willing to, to help the community because ultimately that's what we're here we're a resource to help the community and the reason I say community is because this seller of mine I grew up with in Mill City Oregon and there, there's a story to be told. I mean, the kids, I mean, they, they weren't from there. But um, her oldest daughter was my brother's first crush. I forgot about that. And on the listing appointment, that was said. 
But there, <laughs> <laughs> but we moved away when I was about eight years old, and here I am at 25 years old selling the grandpa's property, the se- the grandpa's house, and um, that 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 just means so much to me. That community is able to come out and say, Spence, I love what you're doing. Tell me what my home's worth. Compete for a listing. Because I competed against mm-hmm. four or five other agents. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, they said, sell my house. So here we are. Here's just one free promotional tool that I get to use mm-hmm. to promote a seller of ours. And the property address is 1071 Southeast 5th Avenue in Mill City, Oregon. This will be a three-bed, two-bath. And I was really surprised when I went in the initial, initial listing appointment because it's built in 1980. It was a quality build back in the 80s. Honestly, in the mm-hmm. lot itself, it was a big lot. And what he did in 2011 is pretty phenomenal. He put amazing exposed wood beams. He expanded the kitchen. Because in the 80s, a lot of the, the rooms are enclosed and, right. and more square and right. symmetrical. Right. What he did is he, he did a modern update to it for like what people are building right now. So it's an open concept kitchen, full granite slabs are beautiful. It's kind of got that Venetian cream tones to it. Ooh. And the wood floors, oh my gosh, they're 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 beautiful. Mm. And he did a really, really neat um touch mm. and characteristic with the wood floors all the way around the trim. It's a it's a lighter type of wood and then he did a dark fade wood all along the trim hmm. to, to line the outskirts of the flooring. And I thought that was a that was a huge upgrade though because that costs a lot of money to, to do when you're laying flooring. So That's cool. kudos to that seller. It's a very quality build. It's got a shed in the backyard, three bed, two bath, 1,750 square foot. That's 1,750 square foot in Mill City, Oregon. There's only like four homes available in Mill City. Yeah, up in the and, canyon. And ours is, is so... I, you know, to me, it's underpriced um, because we want to be competitive in this we, market. We got a price. We do have a price. It's three ninety nine nine hundred. Wow. Just under four hundred grand. I can round it up to four hundred grand on radio. Wow. But um, three bed, two bath, four hundred grand. It's professionally staged. Listing photos are going to be done mm. on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. Wow. But for you guys to get a head start, I'm listing it on our show today. I have the listing contract signed and dotted and dated. And it's ready to go. So we're holding it off market because I don't have the correct photos and I want to push this thing. So you guys come to us directly. We'll get you that property in there and um, we can maybe make something happen for you. So for our seller or buyers who are moving here from out of state and aren't familiar with the area, how far is Mill City from Salem? Okay. So for, it's a 35 minute straight drive, Highway 22. Okay. People love it because there's absolutely no street lights, it's nothing. Beautiful. It's beautiful. And a, it's a beautiful yeah. drive. It's yeah. in the it's in the canyon. You're alongside um, the the San Am River and you're in a logging town community and What's really cool about this home is the landscape that surrounds it. Oh, yeah. You are surrounded by the canyon, Mm, and your backyard is a mountain. And the air up there smells so good. It's It's like, oh, it's like fresh. fresh. Like, it's very fresh fresh air up there. Fish are running. I will say. Everybody's fishing in the river right now. You got some beautiful salmon steelhead. (laughs) And um, really, really quality build there, and it's not going to last long. So I hope you guys listen to this on the radio. The address for one more time is 1071 Southeast 5th Avenue, Mill City, Oregon. That's 1071 5th Avenue, Mill City, Oregon, three bed, two bath, 1700 square, over 1700 square foot, 400 grand. Amazing. All Don't right. let that one pass by. I All loved right. it. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that, Spencer. Um, Thank you so much for listening today. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because we do come on here every single week talking about real estate. And we'll see you guys next week.